Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Thursday, the 23rd of December, 2021. Thank you for tuning in. Now, I'm going to tell you guys what, something I've been out there doing really some digging and research. And I got new information last night, very important information, that basically changes, every, changes, the, changes the outlook, my outlook, on what's going on out there. And, you know, I'm going to tell you guys, <laughs> this is the most interesting time right now where things are changing so fast. It's such an interesting period in time. We're going to get right in there and take a look at the information that I've been coming into um, right away. So let's get the chart started right here and take a look. First thing we want to talk about is the velocity of money. Now, I want to focus on this chart. And what I want to show you guys is, is this little bump right here. Little bump up in the velocity of money we had right here. Um, it looks like that was all those stimmy checks. <laughs> Made that little bump up in the, but we've come back down again. And now we're running historically low. We've never seen a velocity of money so low as it is right now. You cannot have a good economy, a good thriving economy with the velocity of money this low. There is problems with the wheels and gears in the economy right now. Now, I'll tell you guys what. What plays into this a lot is this new viral thing called Omicron. I got a new information about Omicron. I'm going to share it with you guys at the end of the show because I know a lot of you guys don't like talking about Omicron. So at the very end of the show, I'm going to talk about it. But the thing is, is this new information that I'm, I'm getting, I'm gathering here, plays into the financial system big time. And it's not necessarily bad. So if you want to find out about it, stay tuned to the end of the show where I'm going to talk about it. But I'm talking about the markets right now. Uh, we're going to take a look right here. The market message, the Fed will go too far to slow inflation and they're going to break something. Yes, they are going to break something. I'll tell you what they're going to break. They're going to break the debt bubble. They're going to start to break the debt bubble. But, you know, breaking the debt bubble fully, just popping the whole thing completely. These are all the multi-bubbles out there, real estate. Everything's in a bubble. It's everything bubble. To pop it fully would bring the economy down to a point where it would create an event. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Uh, Gregory Manorini on his latest show on his channel, he goes into detail of what would happen if the debt bubble popped. And I would encourage you to watch that show. Because if the debt bubble were to pop, pull, to fully pop at this point, it would create a, an event that would have a magnitude that would be on the, beyond proportion of what anybody out there could possibly imagine. It would be a horrible horrible event and in fact if the debt bubble starts to pop or deflate the ones in power are going to react to that and there is a little problem here though it could pop so fast that they might not be able to get to catch it in time you know i've thought about that and that's scary that's scary so why they're even playing around with with what the market, what the Fed's doing right now is, I consider it to be extremely dangerous. When the, they said the Fed is is going through this process of trying to stop inflation, the other side of that is deflation, and that is a monster. It's a monster, and if they unleash it too far out of the box and it moves too fast, it could freeze the entire system. Nothing would function. So we're living in very unprecedented times right now. What they've created is a global Ponzi scheme beyond measure. And you do not want to burst that Ponzi scheme. Because it could be unimaginable, the consequences. 
Now, what we're going to talk about now is uh, the markets. We're going to get right in there. And we're going to take a look at the silver today and see what it's doing. It's up two cents on the day, 22.81. In other words, I guess what I'm telling you guys is they're playing with fire, the Fed. The central banks need the support. I don't agree with it. First off, I don't agree with the support that they're giving by pumping the economy up higher and higher and higher. But at this point, they've got us so high on this on this cliff that if we fall, well, it's game over. And so we have to keep climbing higher. And that yields inflation, ultimately. And so the Fed is trapped here. Because if they continue to move forward with debt creation, they're going to create massive amounts of inflation. And if they try to haul back, well, they risk a sudden, sharp, steep deflationary period that could break all the debt bubbles and pop everything open and, and cause enormous disaster and chaos. Anyway, let's move on. We're at 2281 for the silver price today. Up two cents on the day so far. Uh, let's take a look at gold here. Uh, gold. Gold's at 1805, and it's up a dollar 90 on the day so far. Uh, let's take a look now at cryptocurrencies. We're looking at 2278 for cryptocurrencies. Now, let me refresh the page and see which direction they're moving up or down. 2291. So they're going up. <clears throat> $48,759 for Bitcoin. Uh, per Bitcoin. Uh, that's what we're seeing right now on the Bitcoin charts. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones today. And I need to make this page a little bit larger. Let's go up a little bit larger so we can see it here. There we go. Uh, 35973 Isn't that a new peak? It's almost 36,000. I think that's... Is that a new peak? I think it is. Uh, we're in a melt-up right now. That's... This isn't not... This is not good. Because you know the old saying, what goes up comes down. And the thing is, is when we got the Fed moving in toward a period of tightening, and we're also reaching the end of all that liquidity that they injected into the system, still sloshing, still a little bit sloshing around. But... Uh, the thing about it is you need more, more, and more to send these markets higher, higher, higher. And there's not more forthcoming now. They're just working with what's sloshing around in the system still from all that stimulus we had. It's over now. It's all over. Well, you saw the velocity of money chart. You saw that little bounce in the velocity of money. That was all that stimulus that hit in the fan. All of that money that they were pouring out, no stimulus checks. Now that's gone. You can see that the velocity of money's went back down again. So right now, we're like a car that's still running on the highway, but it's got an empty tank of gas. You know? And how far can you continue to run before all of a sudden choo -choo -choo -choo, the engine goes blah, 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 blah. That's where we're going right now with this. You know? And we got some bad news. And I'm going to put it some bad news for markets. Perhaps good news against the... This might be very good news if it comes to the pandemic, but bad news for markets, which I'm going to discuss in a minute when we get to the end of these markets. So we're at 35,973. That's if it's true. Well, it's an article from USA Today. So I imagine it's, I, I, it's just it's beyond belief what I'm reading there. And I'm going to point it out to you guys in just a minute or two when I get done here. Uh, so we got the Dow Jones done. Let's take a look at oil. $72.81 today. And oil is is kind of going along sideways today. It's $72.82. Now let's take a look at the move index. $76.85. And it's going along sideways too. Nothing to see here. Bonds and rates. Now there's something to see here. And this is something big to talk about. This debt market right here, the bonds, is a huge, 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 huge market. Huge market. Huge. And 
what they're doing could have the most impact right here. This has been in a bull market since time in memoriam. It's been such a long bull market. Bonds. And it's got these yields down. See, when you're in a bond bull market, what happens is these yields fall. It's got these yields so blessed low, so unbelievably low, that now at this point, you know, uh, can, if yields rise, they can't service the debt. And it cause, it'll cause other malfunctions within the system that can bring the whole house of cards down. And what we're going to see is we're going to see the tendency is for these to rise. Now, the Fed can do something about this. It's called yield curve control. But that's a biggie, too. That would be just like them going back to, uh, say, they doubled down on quantitative easing, and they went back to quantitative easing. That would be the equivalent of them doing yield curve control. So they're going to have to let these yields drift on these bonds without doing anything about it, because that's a big move if they if they do yield curve control. That's a big move. And they don't want to do that, especially in a, when they're in this business of what they're doing, right? And so these are going to continue to creep up, these yields, because of what the Fed's doing. This could become, this could spin out of control. I'm telling you, this could spin out of control. Let's take a look at the dollar index today at 96.07, and we're seeing a fallen, uh, it's fallen right now, but if you take a look at the whole day, it's going along sideways. But it is falling right now, 96.07. Now, I told you guys at the end of the show I'm going to talk about the Omicron. Well, let's go right here to this site. And this is the new information that I'm getting. And it's coming from USA Today, uh, an article. It says, Omicron may bring 140 million new COVID infections to the United States in, in a very short period of time. Right? But that's not what I'm focusing on. What I'm focusing on is, is down here in this article. I'm going to highlight it for you guys because this is just blowing me, blowing my mind away. It says, while meta-analysis may have suggested previous vi variants, variants cause about 40% of cases to be asymptomatic. Now, I'm going to tell you guys what asymptomatic is. And this is, they're talking about previous variants here. It says, previous variants cause about 40% of cases to be asymptomatic. Right there, it says it in USA Today. They're talking about variants like Delta. It means 40% of the people out there with Delta could have, the, have it in an asymptomatic way. And I'll tell you what asymptomatic is. You don't know you got it. You feel okay. You're walking and talking and going around in the supermarket and whatever, and you nothing feel nothing. Asymptomatic means that you don't have any symptoms. No symptoms. Nothing. Let that sink into your brain just a little bit. Uh, there was a lot of asymptomatic cases with, with Delta. They're saying 40% here. Now, I don't know if it was that high, I'm just, but that's what they're saying here in USA Today. But this is what got me. It said, Murray said more than 90% of people infected with Omicron. It says more than 90% of people infected with Omicron may never show symptoms. What? 90% of people, it says right here, USA Today. Now, I'm questioning this. I'm not stating this to you guys as a fact. I'm looking here at USA Today, and I'm questioning this. Is this really true? That's what I'm doing right now. I'm questioning it. But it, what it says is, it says more than 90% of people infected with Omicron may never show symptoms. This is just a stunner to me. And it changes the whole outlook on everything. Do you remember I told you guys 
that if Omicron comes in bad, 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 the worse it is, the better it's going to be for markets to send markets up. You remember the opposite side of that is if I told you if it doesn't pan out with what's happening with the Fed and they're going into this tightening schedule and they're cutting back and there's no there's no uh, impetus within government right now to stimulate. They're all like the whole mood is like changed. It's all like now we got to cut cut the cake. We got to not have any. We got to pull the punch bowl away. We got to pull the punch bowl away. That's the attitude right now. Okay? And remember I told you guys that if, if Omicron didn't pan out, that it's going to be bad for the economy. It's going to be down. Markets down. Everything down because of what the Fed's doing. Now they're going to keep pushing. They're going to keep pushing this button. The central banks as long as they can get away with it without the markets and everything falling they're gonna keep pushing they're gonna keep they don't know when to stop either they're good if they can get away with a little bit they'll do more a lot more it's like a kid with a cookie jar you know if he can get away with steal one cookie he'll steal a whole jar if nothing nobody stops him and that's the way with the Fed if you don't stop them well if they're gonna try keep trying the water uh, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to they're going to cut back and taper on their bond purchase pro program. Now if they get away with that, then what are they going to do? Well, then they're going to get out there and they're going to start raising interest rates. And if they get away with that, you can bet your bottom dollar is going to be more. They're going to keep cutting and cutting and cutting as much as they can get away with. But what's going to stop them from getting away with it? Well, the system's going to crash. So in other words, what I'm basically telling you guys is they're going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing until the system crashes. Now, we had hopes of big stimulus from Omicron. Those hopes are now vanishing. In my mind, seeing here that 90% says 90% of people infected with Omicron never show symptoms. And the people that do show symptoms, well, what is it anyway? Well, it's low hospitalizations. So what's all that pointing toward? That's pointing toward this thing blowing over at a certain point. And then us being stuck with a Fed, a, man, a, ma a maniacal Fed that's going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing that button as much as they can get away with until they crash it. Just what I said on the, on the original start here uh, on this part of the article. The market message, the Fed will go too far. In other words, they're going to keep pushing that button until they break something. They're going to keep pushing that button to slow inflation until they break something. What's the opposite of inflation? Deflation. Look out, guys. Look out. This could see the prices on almost everything. Price of the markets drop. Price of real estate drop. Everything starts to drop into free fall faster and faster until the Fed reacts. And they're not going to react until it gets really bad. The problem with this is, 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 is it could run away on them. And everything could just basically implode the system. Do they really realize what fire they're playing with? No, they're bureaucrats. They don't realize what they're doing. They don't, they don't, most of them are lawyers. And they are. They're not right in there with the markets every day and see the, the market movements and everything and have to actually focus, put their nose down and study this and study what's going on for five or six hours a day. That's not, that's not their business. Their business is they are the, the qualified experts, and what they do is, is, is they just basically... They don't really, they study these charts like the, they have a few charts that they study like, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the chart, one of the, one of their main charts and everything, but they're mostly academics. They don't really know the nuances of the economy, what's really happening out there. Anyway, I'm starting to break off and just talk about the Fed, I mean, 
this is a total Ponzi scheme mess, and the Ponzi scheme's coming to an end. And it can only move in one, two directions. Inflation or deflation. And it wants to swing wildly between either one. Because we don't really have a, a good, healthy economy out there. All we have is market intervention by these big central banks. And we have a failing economy at the core of this whole thing. In other words, it's like a rotten tooth that's aching, but it's got a nice cap on it. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.